Cassie was in a deep and peaceful sleep with no idea that the darkness was right beside her, watching her as her rhythmic breathing caused her chest to rise and fall slowly and steadily, gently engulfing her from head to toe so as not to wake her, but at the same time, allowing her to sense his presence, feel his heaviness, and have fear sweep through her veins. In a sleepy stupor, she stirred, trying to remove the weight and even squirm her way out from under it. Terror grew inside her as she fell over and over again to escape his grasp. This isn't real, Cassie thought as she turned over. I can wake up from this nightmare any moment now. But the darkness persisted. Realizing she can't move, Cassie tried to move her arms, but they wouldn't budge. They were completely fixed in place on the bed. Glancing all around the room, Cassie tried to determine what was going on, but there was nothing or no one that should be causing this to happen. Frantically, she tried to lift herself from the bed, and it was as if she was being pinned down, but she could physically see no one. Desperate to be free of the heaviness that was holding her down, she kicked and squirmed as hard as she could, but it was useless, imprisoned in her own bed. Cassie had no way of knowing it was the darkness that was completely consuming her. As fear gave way to panic, she started screaming as loud as she could, hoping Drew would hear her cries and come rescue her. While she screamed, she immediately realized there was no sound. No matter how loudly she screamed for help, nothing echoed through the air. It was as if the dead of night drowned out the screams before they could even climb completely from her lungs. Her silent screams and useless thrashing about did little more than exhaust her. Perfectly still now, Cassie closed her eyes and drew in deep, staggering breaths. Tears streamed down the side of her face as fear and panic took over. Realizing she had completely given up, the darkness weighed heavier on Cassie. He wholly consumed her, which was his initial plan from the beginning. No one can actually resist the darkness, so he wasn't forced to wait very long. The ability to kick or move about had been stripped from her. Feeling helpless as she lay still, silently crying, he enlarged himself so that the entire room was pitch dark and she could no longer see Drew or anything that was in the room around her. Being surrounded by utter darkness, Cassie felt as if she was suspended in a vast nothingness. There were no sights, no sounds, and nothing she could feel. She was absolutely alone and scared. All at once, Cassie realized she could move and decided to escape to freedom. There was no way she would know 
that the darkness had released her and was watching her every move. Anywhere she decided to try and go, he was there. As fast as she could, Cassie ran into the pitch dark abyss. Nothing around her had given her any clues as to what awaited her, but she knew she wasn't going to stay where she was. Anything was better than this. Running with her arms and hands stretched out to help guide her way, Cassie finally found a wall. Frantically, she started feeling everywhere for a break in the wall. Nothing. She jumped as high as she possibly could to try and determine how high it was and she was never able to find the top of the wall so that she could climb over it to safety. With her back to the wall, she started following the path the wall took her, hoping for a break, a light, or something to help guide her to safety. Cassie felt like her heart would explode with anxiety as she felt tormented Again, she screamed for help, hoping that someone would hear her, hoping that whoever was at the end of the wall would be able to come for her and get her to safety. Nothing happened. No one responded. No sounds were heard. Only her heavy breathing from her desperate cries for help. Being completely exhausted, Cassie fell to the ground, rocking back and forth. She started sobbing. Why? Cassie cried. Why is this happening to me? She said over and over, unable to catch her breath. Little did Cassie know that the darkness was watching her every move, only allowing what he deemed necessary. This was the first night and the beginning of a long relationship that he may never allow her to know any of the answers to her questions that are racing through her mind. After what seemed like forever, Cassie slowly stood up and dusted herself off. She heard a faint rustling noise in the distance, turning her head to one side to hear better. She started walking towards the noise. Could this be the way out of this nightmare? She thought, hoping for the taste of freedom and the joys of home, Cassie ran faster and faster. She headed towards all the noises that were getting louder and louder. She gasped with pure delight when she rounded a corner and she finally saw a tiny bit of light piercing through the vast darkness. Running to the light, Cassie finally had hope, in disbelief, but hoping the end was near, Cassie was giddy with delight, finally, a way out, she exclaimed with glee as she ran. The light grew brighter, enlightening her surroundings, and Cassie realized she was in a cave slowing down, but still heading toward the light. She looked around, wondering how she had gotten into a cave. This makes no sense, she muttered to herself. How did I get here? She asked out loud to no one in particular. Coming to an abrupt halt, she looks all around and then screams at the top of her lungs 
what in the world is happening? Cassie thought, there is no way this can be real. As she slowly and deliberately walked with her hand, running along the side of the cave, caressing the cold, damp edges. Everything felt real enough, but she would never put herself in a position to be in the middle of a cave when she should be home sleeping. Cassie stumbles and falls as she continues to head towards the light. She scrapes her arm on the jagged edge of the cave wall. The pain shoots up through her arm. Cassie winces as she notices the blood trickling down her elbow. She uses her nightshirt to clean up the wound as best as she can. And once again, starts what seems like a never-ending journey toward the light. The sounds of the cave get louder and louder with each step, feeling anxious but determined. Cassie trudged on, getting closer and closer to the light, to safety, to where she knew this nightmarish hell would soon be over. Even though she knew she was alone, Cassie couldn't shake the feeling she was being watched, stopping every so often to make sure she wasn't being followed. Cassie would look back behind her into the pitch darkness. She couldn't see him, but he was there, watching her and allowing her to head to the opening of the cave. She thought she was escaping to freedom, but little did she know she was waltzing into his plans for her. From now on, nothing would happen without his knowledge. Nothing would happen without his approval. Her choices would feel like she was in control, but the darkness would never tolerate that for her again. Being careful where she stepped so as not to fall again Cassie hurried to the opening of the cave. So close, and yet it was so far away. But the light from the opening was such a relief from the darkness that had previously made it impossible to see anything. Before the opening, she couldn't even see her hand in front of her face. And now, she could effortlessly see the rocks and stones in her way. Thanks to the light from the cave, she could now see some water trickling down the wall of the cave. The defined paths she could take were clearer so that she could avoid further injury. This would allow her to be more careful with each step she took, more deliberate, and quickly get to the end. Cassie was exhausted from running, from crying, from all of the emotions that were coursing through her body. Fear was gnawing at her heart because she had no idea if she was actually alone or not. Although she hadn't seen anyone, every instinct she had told her she was not alone. Her instincts were usually right, and she had learned to trust them very early on in life. The sadness she felt from physically being alone was devastating at times. This entire situation would be less scary if there was someone else here with me right now, Cassie thought to herself. The confusion that was running rampant was an entirely different beast. Why was she paralyzed for a short time? 
Why were her screams silent? How did she end up in this cave? Where is this cave even actually located? Where on earth is she right this very moment? Who is doing this? Is this a joke? Is someone playing a horrible joke that has gone wrong in the worst possible way? The more Cassie began to think, the more the questions began to pile up, and there were no reasonable answers for any of them. An eerie calmness came over Cassie as she thought, that's it, someone is playing a joke on me and must be waiting for me at the end of this cave. Cassie walked faster toward the opening of the cave so that she could give whoever was waiting for her a piece of her mind. It better not be true, she thought. I will kill him because this is not funny. She started humming to herself as she felt a cool breeze from the opening of the cave. The cool, crisp air was refreshing and it felt nice as it brushed past her cheeks. Her curly brunette hair danced in the cooling breeze. Why, she thought, someone would think something like this is funny is beyond me. She kicked a few stones into the water as she walked and talked to herself, trying to make sense of what was happening. Any practical joke can backfire when you put someone all alone in a dark, deserted cave. She yelled out as loud as she could as if someone was listening to her. You would feel horrible if I never made it to the entrance of the cave, wouldn't you, hmm? She kept taunting the supposed listener. The edge of the cave was just a few feet away now. Home was within reach, and soon this traumatic event would all be over. Whoever was responsible for this would need to be told in no uncertain terms that this is not how you treat friends. This is not what you do for a joke, as it could have literally caused a panic attack, or worse, a heart attack even. Cassie skipped to the cave entrance and announced with great joy, I made it with her arms outstretched to the sky. She quickly covered her mouth with her hands with shock at the fright that was before her. Tears streamed down her face as she dropped down to her knees and sobbed loudly with great distress. Cassie couldn't believe her eyes. There was no one waiting for her at the entrance of the cave. In fact, there was nothing at the entrance of the cave. As far as she could see was the ocean. The entrance of the cave wasn't actually an entrance at all. It was just an opening in the side of a mountain that overlooked an ocean somewhere. No way to climb down, no path to take, and no way to escape from this night of misery she has been enduring. Still shocked, Cassie looked behind her into the darkness of the cave and wondered if she should venture back. And she remembered the chilling events of the evening, feeling helpless, hopeless. She looked down from the cliff and couldn't even begin to imagine how high up she was. There was literally no way for her to escape. The tears started falling again. She couldn't control the anger, fear, 
or horror that was consuming her heart because of this ridiculous situation she had found herself in. Where is Drew? She wondered out loud. Why isn't he helping me? She asked. Is he behind this? If he is, he needs to get me out of here right now, she cried. Drew, she screamed in agony and fear. Drew, she screamed again and again, over and over, with tears streaming down her face. Drew, please help me. She cried out over and over. In her fear, she felt something grab a hold of her arms. She couldn't see anyone. Her fear grew. Her heart started racing. Then she felt two hands on her cheeks. All the while, no one was in front of her. Trying to catch her breath, she just kept repeating Drew's name. Her chest felt heavier, weighted down, and she gasped for breath as she struggled to call out for Drew. Her eyes slowly closed as she realized this was it. This is how it is going to end. A cruel joke gone wrong, and she would never get to see Drew again. Cassie coughed as she heard Drew yelling her name. She looked around and realized she was in their bed, in their room. She grabbed Drew and held tightly to him, crying through the tears. It was awful. I couldn't move. I couldn't breathe. I was in a cave. But before that, I was in nothingness. I know it sounds crazy, but it was also very real. And there was a giant wall with no top that I could reach. Shh, Cassie, Drew said. He held her close and rocked her gently. I've got you. It was all a bad dream. You're home and you've never left. You've been home the whole time. Drew assured her. Cassie's pillow was wet with tears, proving she had in fact been home and crying in her sleep during this nightmare. As she snuggled in as close as she could get to Drew, she whispered, it was so real. No one would help. I couldn't find you, and I thought I would never see you again. Drew pulled her in closer and reassured her that it was indeed all a dream and he wasn't going anywhere and he wouldn't let anything happen to her, especially not a cruel joke like allowing someone to drop her off into a dark cave alone ever. Feeling safe and protected. Cassie drifted off to sleep, nestled into Drew's side with his arm around her. She didn't know it, but life for her, as she knew it, would never be the same. Yes, even in the daytime, things would change. She would never truly be free of him the darkness. She would never be able to escape his consuming power. He would always be there, lurking about. The darkness had plans for Cassie. The darkness had decided that Cassie was the one he wanted and nothing would stand between them. Nothing.